Hey everyone, Church of SDFU. So I just wanted to weigh in on the Ron Paul racist newsletters controversy. Uh, so, first of all, if you've watched any of my other Ron Paul videos, you know I'm not especially fond of the guy. Not necessarily, personally, he seems like a nice enough guy from what I can see, which doesn't really tell me anything, because that's the kind of show everyone tries to put on but based on his policies, which I think are terrible. Um, but now this, the, the, the racist newsletters thing, and it's not the first time it's come up. I mean, the first time it came up was 1996, at which point Ron Paul said, uh, sorry, so I'll, I'll actually start off by just briefly, if you haven't heard of what the controversy is, Ron Paul, there used to be a newsletter published in his name, and he actually charged a hundred bucks a month for this newsletter and this was like in the 90s uh, so that's very very good money for a newsletter in my book so well done on getting people to pay that money and that contains some vile heinous uh, racist statements uh, that are fairly uncontroversially racist I would suggest now Ron Paul 1996 said yes those were my words I wrote those newsletters but um, they were taken out of context now if you look at the newsletters they weren't taken out of context they're just plain racist and terrible um, but so now he says that no in fact he didn't write them someone else wrote them he doesn't know who and he didn't actually read the newsletter to check up on what was going on so he didn't even know that th these kind of things were getting published over all of those years now okay so I mean what I've heard online is well he was a busy doctor running his own medical practice so obviously he didn't have the time to check up on his newsletter to, you know, make sure that it wasn't publishing horrible, horrible racist filth. Let me just mention again, 100 bucks a month, and apparently he made a lot of money with this. On the Young Turks, they suggested he might have made a million dollars off this newsletter. Uh, I haven't verified this, but I don't think there's any any discussion that most of that money went to him so it was certainly an official uh, Ron Paul newsletter now I don't care if you're a very busy doctor you're putting out a newsletter once a month no, it's not every day it's not a thousand pages and you're telling me that he couldn't be bothered to read the newsletter every now and again to come across those things which were terrible that were written in his name under basically suggesting that he wrote them himself he didn't have the time to do that he, he just let people do the newsletter and he didn't give another thought to it BS um, this would indicate either that um, he was very very lazy or completely incompetent both not very good outcomes to me. Now, of course he read his own newsletter that was published once a month. Of course he did. Of course he read those articles. And of course he knew what was being put into that newsletter, which was racist stuff in general, end of times, be paranoid, and get your guns and, you know, prepare your bunker kind of stuff. Of course he knew that. Now, I mean, I personally don't know Ron Paul. I know what he says nowadays, and it seems to not be racist. If anything, he seems to be uh, pretty good on the issue. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, despite the fact that there have been musings by some of his former campaign staff that he's a bit dodgy on some issues. I'll, I'll accept that he's not racist. But, it really does seem like he was benefiting from the publishing of racist newsletters. How does that make sense? Well, it only makes sense if 
he allowed them to get published because it benefited him in some way, uh, despite him not agreeing with it. How could that be? Well, the one million dollars. That would be some incentive. The right-wing fringe just happened to be the people that shared a lot of his ideas about a variety of topics that the mainstream wouldn't even have considered. So, he pandered to them. He pandered to them in an official newsletter bearing his name. And he made some good money with it. And maybe, you know, I mean, this is more difficult to quantify, but maybe some some fairly useful political allies for a while. We don't know. Um, and then later on, he jettisoned those people. What also fits into that kind of that kind of framework is that in 1996 he didn't actually disavow that he'd written it. He said he'd written it but it was misinterpreted. Maybe that was because in 1996 still being a fairly uh, you know fairly young and fairly kind of uh, fresh in the game he still needed that kind of support. So he wasn't going to disavow it entirely. Nowadays, of course, he's got a f uh, somewhat solid popular base. And if anything, uh, that right-wing fringe of racists would nowadays worsen his chances in politics. So, of course, he's going to disavow them today. But in 1996, he chose to not do so. He chose to instead try to maneuver his way around the issue in a different way. Um, so what, so in summary, my thinking on this is, could be wrong, I, Ron Paul may not actually have read his own newsletter, um, lots of people apparently did read it, but Ron Paul himself didn't have the time to read it, very strange, it's very strange for a libertarian, I know a lot of libertarians put a lot of value into trust and and uh, kind of using cross as a currency. It's very strange that Ron Paul would um, then place so little emphasis on building his own trustworthiness. But maybe he didn't read it all, at all and he's just incompetent. But I think the more ready interpretation is he knew that he, his support for his ideas, right-wing fringe as they were, um, would come from the right-wing fringe, and so he pandered to them. He pandered to them for profit, like any politician does. It's just what politicians do to get the capital, both in terms of actual money and in terms of manpower and voter base, to actually go further. And that wasn't, you know, I'm not saying that was the backbone of his strategy, but it very much seems to have been something that, as part of his strategy, he accepted. And, you know, he went along with that, whilst he thought that it benefited him. And once it stopped doing so, he jettisoned it. And he he's now trying to just, um, play White Knight. Uh, you know, it's, to me, the thing is, this being in a newsletter that was supposedly in a person's words, in almost any other case, this would be like an open and shut case. You'd say, well, this newsletter carried his name, that's such a terrible thing. I mean, you can either come out and apologize and explain exactly how it happened or you're done. In Ron Paul's case, most of his supporters, you know, they, they're more than willing to make up endless excuses for how he was completely innocent of the entire topic. Which I find interesting, but not really surprising. Anyways, let me know what you think, Church of SDFU.